What's up, Gator Nation? Billy Napier and staff have landed perhaps their biggest recruiting haul of their short tenure at Florida, landing elite quarterback prospect from the 2024 class, DJ Lagway, out of Willis, Texas. Lagway is six foot two, 225 pounds, um, and we're going to watch his highlight tape uh, right off the bat here. I'm going to go ahead and start playing it, and we'll talk about him. Uh, how big of a commitment this is. And after the highlights, we're going to go over his his uh, rating and what he what he does uh, as far as how he's going to affect Florida, how he's going to impact the roster, yada, yada, all that good stuff, and, and where he where he ranks on the big board for 2024. And we'll also compare him to 2023 class. And <laughs> newsflash, he is going to be rated very highly. Uh, you can see so far throughout the video, what makes him such a special player is the fact he is that big and, and that quick, as we just saw in that run. Uh, again, 6'2", 225. I mean, he that, that's his junior year measurements. I'm sure he can still only get bigger at this point. And I don't really see a reason why he would lose weight when he runs like he does, jumps like he does right there in that tape. Um, he's just dynamic. He has a huge arm. He is an elite athlete. Um, and he basically just does everything that you would want. I mean, the only concern, uh, as is typical with, uh, kids that are, you know, athletic at the quarterback position that maybe rely on running more than anything is, uh, their accuracy. Uh, for whatever reason, a lot of times they struggle with accuracy, but Lagway, I think had a 67% completion percentage and threw for 2,500 yards his junior season. So he had a massive improvement there compared to where he was the years prior. And they were still pretty solid the year prior. He was still over 55%, I believe. Uh, he ran the ball less, but he ran it more effectively. Um, I think he averaged almost 10 yards a carry. And th this is actually a sophomore highlight tape just because there's a little more to it than his junior highlight tape. I'm not sure if his junior highlights were cut short, didn't have everything. Uh, but I just wanted to go uh, go watch his uh, sophomore tape again because I feel like it showed a little more of what he can do. Uh, you know, there you can see he, he can sit back in the pocket, uh, sling the rock, throw it 60, 70 yards on a dime. He can make guys miss in the pocket, scramble, evade people, throw pretty well on the run, as you can see right there. Uh, he's actually going to take off and run this one. This is what truly makes him such a difference maker is how he runs like this at his size uh, I mean he is basically Anthony Richardson but probably a better passer um, I know a lot of people don't want to hear Anthony Richardson the, the people that are kind of fed up with the thought of a guy that can't complete 50 percent of his passes I don't think Lagway uh, is going to be that type of quarterback I think he's actually going to be decent as far as his, his completion percentage I think he's far more advanced than Anthony Richardson was especially at the same age. I mean, Anthony Richardson didn't even start becoming a real quarterback until his senior season, and even then he got hurt. So he just kept taking nicks and knocks, and, and he just never really fully developed at quarterback, uh, especially compared to his Lagway kid. And we know, you know, Lagway being from the state of Texas for whatever reason, these kids have the most elite coaching there is in the nation at the quarterback position, maybe outside of the state of California. Uh, and the state of Georgia is starting to get that way as well, but – Texas has always been a quarterback hotbed, uh, which makes me like this take even more. Uh, and if you've been watching the tape, I mean, again, you can see it all. There is anticipation right there in that throw. Um, he just does it all, man. Like, I, I don't know how else to say it. We can watch a couple more clips. Uh, he's a total package. He is a huge recruiting victory for Billy Napier. Um, we'll watch one more highlight here, and then we will call it a video. It's wide open throw. That's just the types of plays right there that that play there at the end. Um, or Stacy Gage. Sorry, I was doing some other stuff. That play at the end there is just an example of uh, why he is such a uh, another example of why he is such a high ceiling player. Uh, the the teams have to respect the fact that he can run the ball like he does. So you're gonna see safeties lose receivers in the backfield. You're gonna see linebackers completely forget to cover running backs or anybody running over the middle because they're so focused on this. 225 pound quarterback that can run like a running back um that there's going to be busted coverages so you saw it with anthony richardson this year there's some wide open receivers for florida because teams are concerned that uh you know when a guy like that breaks free 
you know, one on one, you're most likely not going to make the tackle as a defender. Um, but anyways, let's get into his rating here, and then we'll get into his uh, where he stands on Florida's big board for 2024. Uh, I do not think anybody is going to be ranked higher than him in 2024. There are a few guys that could be, uh, but the chances they commit to Florida right now aren't looking great. Uh, but here we see on the on three profile, um, committed to Florida over USC, who he visited last second. So that's a big recruiting victory over Lincoln Riley. Uh, they. Committed to him over Texas A&M, the home state school. Committed to him over LSU. And Clemson, for whatever reason, is not on the front of the page. But he was highly considering Clemson as well. Uh, who, all know, who we all know has developed Deshaun Watson and Trevor Lawrence. And now has Kay Klubnick coming in. So that's a pretty big victory for Napier as well. For somebody who has not proven he can put quarterbacks in the league uh, versus two or three other coaches that have put plenty of quarterbacks in the league for him to get this early of a commitment from Lagway is pretty insane. That just shows you how great of a recruiter Napier and his staff are. Um, I know, you know, Florida sells itself according to most people, but I mean, when you're comparing it to massive schools like that, it really doesn't. So Napier and company did their job. They got probably who's got their number one target uh, a year before signing day. So now he can come back in here and recruit a lot of these kids, uh, especially receivers Wide receivers, uh, I mean, you got two elite wide receivers in Florida next year, and then you have two really good wide receivers from, uh, one's from Texas and one is from Illinois or Missouri that's on his seven-on-seven -seven flag team uh, that are, I believe, going to start showing interest in Florida now. All these kids are five stars. They've all reached out to Lagway and, and made it public that they are now interested in Florida more because of this commitment. Uh, we can see here he is rated pretty much a top, Six quarterback on every site. He's actually number one or number two on every site, but 247 Sports. Uh, I think Rivals, seeing they have him rated lowest nationally at 77, that has to be a dual threat quarterback ranking. I guess they still do that. Uh, so he's the number one dual threat quarterback on Rivals. But you can see on three thinks extremely highly of him. They have him seventh in the entire nation. ESPN thinks very highly of him. Number 12 in the entire nation, the number one quarterback in the country. Uh, 247 is kind of in the middle, and that's still very high. Number 35 in the nation, number six quarterback, uh, and the number four overall player in Texas. So he's a top five player in Texas on every single site, uh, which, I mean, you're going to take those at Florida all day. I mean, Texas and Texas A&M would take that at their schools all day. So Florida comes into Texas and somehow miraculously, I mean, we're, we're so used to Dan Mullen recruiting that we're not used to these kind of recruiting victories at Florida. Um here you can see Florida's current roster, uh, which you know we'll start going over in videos here whenever I start doing more in-depth previews uh, of the recruiting class and of Florida's 2023 roster outlook. Uh, you can see that Jack Miller is currently slated to be number one on the depth chart, followed by Max Brown and Jaden Rashada. Um, now Florida is going to add a transfer portal quarterback. Uh, I would think definitively going to add at least one this year. I don't know who it's going to be yet, but they'll add one. So they'll probably have four quarterbacks whenever uh, 2023 comes around. Pending who that transfer is, whether it's a senior like Devin Leary, uh, there may only be three by the time that Lagway arrives on the roster. So, you know, giving Lagway a little more room to uh, come in and, and be the number one. Uh, if he can somehow beat out Jaden Rashada. Uh, who is a highly rated quarterback that we just received a commitment from as well. And is actually my last video that I made. Uh, but here we go. Here we see the 2024 big board for Florida. Very early, very, very early. Florida still has not offered a lot of players who you think that they would have offered by now that are in the top 100 uh, nationally, that are from Florida, that are from Georgia. Uh, at least their pages claim that they don't have Florida offers. So I don't think this is even close to what the big board is going to start looking like come you know spring or summer but for now we'll look at it this way uh lagway is easily the number one recruit on the board uh he had a 9.1 on the gator raider and just for reference for 2023 the highest rated commitment is actually Jaden rashada as well and that's a 905 so Lagway would be the number one commitment in 2023. That's how big of a deal this commitment is for Napier and everybody. I'm not saying Lagway is better than Rashada. Um, I think I have their impact score at the same just because 
just because the public national perception of Florida, when you land a big, high-rated quarterback, especially from s- states like California and Texas, that's massive on a scale of a national, you know, grand scheme of things. It, it changes public perception. Um, so I mean, those are easily ten overall guys. Uh, they're close as far as their overall Gatorators. Lagway's a nine one zero. Um, Rashad is a nine zero five. So that's about that's basically as close as you can get without being tied. Um, so that's not necessarily to say once Lagway gets on campus, I think he's going to beat out Rashada or anything like that. I don't want to bring on any disrespect to him. Uh, I think it just shows the talent that Lagway has and once again, how big of a recruiting victory this is. Uh, you can see coming in second is Miles Graham. Uh, linebacker is going to probably be the most important position to recruit in 2024, pending what we do in the transfer portal. Um, with only having one commitment and only three on the roster currently. So Miles Graham is a, is a huge recruiting win. Uh, I'll do a video on him in the near future as well. Um, followed by Jeremiah Smith, who has actually reached out to Lagway publicly on Instagram. Uh, we have a Darius Hayes, who is an edge or a linebacker. Not really sure what he's going to be yet. I uh, put edge just because that's what 247 has. And he's already six foot four, 210 pounds as a junior in high school. So, we're talking a kid who could be 6'4", 250 by the time he gets done with high school. Um, and some other kids I was talking about that Lagway could have an effect on is jo- Josh is a trader. Josh is a trader. I don't know how to say his name. Sorry about that. Uh, he actually goes to the same school as Jeremiah Smith, and he th- I think he's ranked the second overall wide receiver in the country. He's shown interest in Florida. And the kids that are now going to be more interested in Florida because of Lagway is Ryan Wingo who's currently 11th on the board. Uh, he plays on Lagway 7-on-7 seven seven team, as well as Micah Hudson, you see right here, the 13th overall rated recruit on the big board currently. Uh, I was really impressed by Hudson. I mean, he is a stud. Um, I'm not sure. Let's see. Why is Wingo rated above him? It's just the only reason Wingo is rated above Hudson is because he lives slightly closer to Florida. Uh, than Hudson and really that's so small that that shouldn't matter but the way I have my formula set up that's you know it is what it is we got to have parameters set somewhere um Hudson's a stud I mean you can see he's ranked six nationally on 247 um I didn't even know that I just saw that once I typed it in I forgot but I watched his highlight tape and that kid is explosive I'm talking you know we're bordering Percy Harvin levels of explosiveness um so you know the fact that Lagway plays with him and flag I think this kid absolutely needs to be a major target for Florida, uh, as well as Ryan Wingo. Wingo is all of six foot two. I mean, he may be taller unless he's just playing against a bunch of short kids because I watched his highlight tape, and he dwarfed over the competition and made some insane catches uh, as far as you know going up at a high point and catching the ball. I would say he easily has a 36-inch vertical, if not higher. Uh, you know, being 6'2", that's a great vertical leap, especially at a young age. Uh, and he's very explosive, uh, great straight line speed, especially for being the size that he already is. Uh, so having all four of those receivers on the board early, uh, I think Florida can land at least one of those guys. I think that's your ultimate target. Just because they are in good positions for other guys down the board, like Zion Raggins and James Randall and Bradell Richardson, all these kids are highly rated as well. I think they're in, in very good position for Randall uh, and Richardson. Uh, Raggins I was really impressed by as well. Uh, talk about another extremely explosive kid. Uh, I hope Florida continues to pursue him very hard. Um, but as you can see, I mean, Lagway not only is a big commitment in terms of being a quarterback, being highly rated, but he is going to peak interests of other highly rated recruits. It's just what happens whenever a high rated quarterback's committed. Um, but for now, you know, that'll be it for this video. DJ Lagway committed to the University of Florida. Um, Billy Napier and staff uh, checked that one off as a major victory, especially seeing they beat out once again. They beat Lincoln Riley in USC, who, you know, Lincoln Riley has three Heisman winners. They've beat out uh, Dabo Swinney in Clemson, who has Trevor Lawrence and Deshaun Watson in the NFL. Um, not, I don't think any, any other coach really could have done this at Florida outside of Urban Meyer that we've had recently. Uh, so shout out to Billy Napier and staff. Uh, shout out to DJ Lagway. Uh, and we look forward to seeing what happens with this 2024 class going forward. Uh, until then, till the next video, uh, hopefully we'll be doing some more here in the near future. I'll probably do one on Caleb Banks. 
uh, who just committed to Florida, but he's going to be a 2023 guy because he's a transfer. Uh, until that video, uh, like and subscribe if you please could. Liking the video helps me a lot. Subscribing to the channel helps me a lot. It it uh, it gives me a little more motivation to continue uh, putting these videos out. I haven't been great lately, but now that it's recruiting season, I'm going to be putting more out, definitely. Uh, but until then, go Gators.